So I got a video request recently and someone asked me to do a Bible study on lust and I thought that was a really great idea. So what is lust? Let me look up a, de a definition and I will write it down. So I just googled lust and one of the definitions that came up was a very passionate desire for something. So to feel a strong desire for something. It can also be a strong desire for someone, and a lot of definitions say that it's usually intense. So I know that I do have some um, young women that do watch the videos, and I've even gotten a few messages on Instagram about, um, you know, how to avoid falling into the trap of um, sexual sin, and to just avoid... Um, areas that, you know, God doesn't want one to explore, male or female, if they're not married. And I guess one thing I have to say to that is to avoid it. Say you just quit smoking cigarettes and you're trying to, you know, keep it up and avoid cigarettes, then it probably wouldn't help to be in a situation that puts you around a lot of other people smoking cigarettes because that'll just create a lot of temptation to fall back into that old pattern of smoking cigarettes. And that's the same way with lust. And when I say lust, um, like I said, I know there's been some young women um, that have messaged me about that in relation to, um, you know, relationships and staying pure. But you can lust after an object. You know, there are people who lust after money. There's people who lust after homes and cars and material things. It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, in the aspect of relationships and staying pure. Um, so this can be applicable to anyone, even if you're married. Um, is there something that you're constantly lusting after? Something that you are putting before your relationship with God and you're wanting something in a very unhealthy way. And in regards to the people that did message me about staying pure, so if you um, are in a situation where you feel like you're lusting after someone, then you need to not put yourself in that situation. If you're dating someone, don't be alone with them. Um, do things with groups of people. If you are um, if you are alone with someone, then the temptation is so much more um, present than if you're in a group with a bunch of people. And it's not about how much you can do um, while staying pure, but it's about staying as far away from that line as possible because the more you go down that road, the more difficult it would be to avoid temptation. And as far as waiting until marriage to have sex, I know that as a teenager, it's hard because a lot of, you know, teenagers these days aren't doing that. And so, you know, on top of that, you have peer pressure. And believe me when I say it, it's not worth it. Just wait. And you feel like this period of your life, this teenage years will last forever, but it won't. You know, it actually goes by so fast. And there's a reason why God tells us to do certain things. God wouldn't put, you know, he doesn't put certain guidelines in the Bible to hurt us. He puts it there to keep us safe and to um, help us. So when he says, stay pure until marriage, it's because when you are involved with someone on that level, but you're not married, you risk so many, well, not only, you know, diseases, but also so many emotions that you don't, that you shouldn't really be giving to another person who is not fully invested in you as far as marriage goes. And so, you know, God puts all of those things in place because, well, he's God and he knows what he's doing and it's just to help, you know. And it's the same thing with Adam and Eve and we're talking about that Bible study in Genesis. God gave Adam and Eve everything, but he told them to avoid one thing. And what's the one thing that they did? You know, they totally... Um, you know, they didn't look at everything else that God was giving them. Instead, they looked at the one thing that God told them to avoid. And it ended in heartache and, you know, a lot of sadness and misery for not only Adam and Eve, but <laughs> for the whole lineage of just mankind in general. So, um, you know, God doesn't ever put restrictions or give us rules or, you know, tell us things because he wants to be mean or controlling. He tells us that so that we can avoid being hurt. It's for our own good. The mind governed by the flesh is death, 
but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. And so one thing that I think you can think about um, in relation to this verse is what am I lusting after? Um, and not only that, but what is governing my mind? And if you follow along with me in your own journal, these might be two questions that are important to write down. Um, because I think I will definitely fill in this portion after, but um, what am I lusting after? I know something in my life, um, not necessarily a person, but definitely a material thing that I have been thinking about so much because I want it to happen. Um, but, you know, I'm taking it out of the perspective of, you know, yes, it's cool for it to happen, but what are um, my motives and what am I putting before God? You know, I'm kind of obsessing about it a little bit, um, if you will. And what is governing my mind? Is my mind being governed by the flesh, which is leading to death? The flesh. It has, you know, the things of the flesh are um, of this world, pleasures of this world that are not meaningful when it comes to um, our afterlife in heaven with God. Um, but the mind that is governed by the spirit is life and peace. And so, um, you know, we all have a mind, but what is our mind governed by? And it's important to also be careful, not only um, the people that you hang out with, because oftentimes if you hang out with people that put you in temptation, um, situations that cause you to sin, then, you know, you should probably avoid those people. But not only that, but what are you watching? Is there a TV program that, you know, is encouraging you to act a certain way, whether you realize it or not? What are you listening to? Is there music that causes you to... Um, behave a certain way or think a certain way you know sometimes if we listen to things and watch them on tv enough we'll think that it's okay to do so just be sure to keep that balance and i got that question as well on instagram actually somebody asked me if it's okay to listen to non-christian music and while i don't think that i should be the one to tell you what is okay and what's not okay to do you should definitely tap into what God wants you to do and the way to do that is to get more into the word and to read and believe me he'll guide you into you know what he wants you to do if you're feeling like there's a certain music genre or song um, whatever it is that God doesn't want you to listen to then um, lean into that and hold on to that believe me God will guide you if you seek him the more we submerge ourselves into the word the more you'll feel his presence and guidance and that is all for today. Maybe I'll do a part two on lust, but um, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. I truly do. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you next time.